There are many tools and utilities built into your operating system, with the ping command being one of the most useful, especially when it comes to testing and troubleshooting your own home network. In this video, I'll tell you what the ping command is, how it works, and how you can use it in your own home network setup. Hey everyone, it's Chris here from homenetworkgeek.com where we talk about everything home networking. If you enjoy the video and you find it helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you could drop it a like, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell to turn on notifications. Now let's jump straight in and talk about what the ping command even is. Ping was first developed by Michael Moose back in 1983 and is a way of testing connectivity to a network device. It's a command line based utility that's built into your operating system and is one of the most useful tools at your disposal when it comes to testing and troubleshooting a network. The ping command involves sending a request over the network to a specific device or an address. And if the ping is successful, a response will be received. Some will say that ping is an acronym for Packet Internet Groper, yet Michael himself said the name ping comes from sonar technology. In sonar, a ping refers to the audible sound that is sent out to find an object. Should the sound reach the object, the sound waves will echo back to the source. Ping works by using the echo request and echo reply messages within the ICMP protocol. When the ping command is run, an echo request packet is sent out to the address or the device that you're trying to reach. When the echo request gets received at its destination, the response will be an echo reply packet. Ping can be used as a troubleshooting step to test both the connectivity and anticipated response times. The distance between your computer and whatever you're trying to contact can be measured in what's known as hops. You can also find out what happens in between in terms of packet loss and response times as well. In a nutshell, the ping command allows you to test whether your computer can contact a device either on your local area network or out on the internet. It really is an invaluable tool that will help you greatly when trying to determine whether the fault you're experiencing is local to yourself or is potentially something out of your control. Now the majority of Windows users will use the ping command through the Windows command prompt, although Windows PowerShell can also be used. If you're a Mac OS user, you'll need to use Terminal. So let's take a look at how to access both the command prompt and Terminal, and then everything else that I do in this video demonstrating how the ping command works, I'll be doing within command prompt. So to access the command prompt in Windows, simply press the Windows key and R on your keyboard to launch the run window. In the empty field that appears, type the letters CMD and click OK. This will open up the command prompt. To access terminal in macOS, simply press command and spacebar to launch spotlight, type in terminal, press enter, and that will launch your terminal window. Once you have your command prompt or terminal window open, you can start using the ping command. Simply type ping, followed by a space and the URL of a website or an IP address of a device you want to test connectivity to, and press the enter key. In this example, I sent a ping request to homenetworkgeek.com and I got a reply, which is what I expected. Now, quite a lot of information is received when you run the ping command, so let's take a look at each line and see what you're actually being told. On the first line, we can see the URL of the website the IP address associated with the site, and the size of the packets that were sent. The following four lines show the reply from each of the individual packets, along with the time it took for the response to be received. TTL found at the end of each line is the time to live. This is the amount of time that must pass before that particular packet is discarded. At the bottom of the results, we see a brief summary that describes how many packets were sent and received or lost in transit, as well as the minimum, maximum, and average response times. This concludes the ping command being run, with this example confirming the site is online and accessible. When you are finished, you can simply close the command prompt or the terminal window. If you want to see more than whether just a device can simply be reached, you'll be pleased to hear there are a number of switches associated with the ping command. Now there are many different advanced switches that you can use, and it would take me far too long to explain them all, so follow the link in the description box below to my article where there's a table that covers them all. There are many different ways you can make use of the ping command, so let's take a look at a few examples. This successful response confirms that the many network devices between my computer and homenetworkgeek.com are working. This includes the network card in my computer, my router, and any other internet-based devices that sit between me and the site. If I couldn't ping an internet-based target, I would next ping my router to see if it's reachable. I got a successful response which confirms that my local network is working okay and that the issue is unfortunately most likely out of my control. If I didn't get a response from my router, despite it being powered on and appearing to be working, I would next ping the loopback address. The address will always be 127.0.0.1 
and getting a successful response confirms that the network card in my computer is working properly. I knew the IP address of a device, but not the host name. Using the minus A switch resolves the IP address that I've entered to the host name of the device. I wanted to continuously ping an IP address just to make sure that there isn't any packet loss over an extended period of time. To stop the ping, simply press Ctrl and Z on your keyboard. So the ping command is an incredibly useful utility that's available on all operating systems. It's invaluable when you need to perform some testing or some troubleshooting on your home network. I hope you found this video helpful and can now put into practice the ping command on your own home network. If you did enjoy it, I'd really appreciate it if you could drop the video a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and ring the bell to turn on notifications. And don't forget to head on over to homenetworkgeek.com where I have a ton of articles on everything home networking. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.